Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 286 and session number 86 of Ask Scott. This is where I answer your questions here on the podcast. And you guys know I love every single minute of it. And you know what? Since I've gotten back from Arizona, from our TAS Breakthrough Live event, I enjoy these even a little bit more. And the reason is, is because I kind of know who I'm speaking to. I mean, I know a lot of you because I've interacted with you, but there's a lot of you that I might not have met. But now the event really allowed me to speak to individuals in groups and really just get to to have that cup of coffee with you know some good friends of mine, and that's you right now. So I want you guys to imagine that we are in that coffee shop, or we're in that room, and we're having that cup of coffee or that beverage, and we're just going to be talking about this business stuff, right? I mean, that's really what I want to do here, and like I said, I am fired up to jump into this, this week's Q&A because... I am just re-energized in a sense because of that live event that we just had. Really, really excited. Now, anyone that's listening that attended that live event, I just want to say, you guys rock, and you guys made me feel really, really awesome for that weekend, Uh, just about how much value that you've received from the podcast and uh, a way for us to kind of work together. So I just want to say thank you so, so much. I do appreciate it. And if you didn't make it, well, maybe next time. Maybe next time we'll hang out and uh, we can uh, get together and and have that cup of coffee. If you guys want to hear of any upcoming live events that we do. Right now, there is nothing scheduled, but if you do want to get on that list, you can just head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash live, and you can probably see some highlights there. Maybe not from this one yet, depending on when you're listening to it, but you'll see some highlights from a a live event that we have done in the past. Um, And I just have to say again, I'm just so fired up from that trip, and uh, I'm looking forward to jumping into today's question. So, before, before we jump into that, I wanted to ask you guys a quick favor, all right? If you guys are fans of the podcast, which if you're listening, I hope that you are, um, and you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe on iTunes, okay? If you're on Stitcher, then subscribe on Stitcher. Whatever platform you're on right now, subscribe. This way here, you don't have to remember to come back. It'll just remind you when we go live with a new episode. So definitely go ahead and subscribe. And do me one more quick favor. If you think there's anyone that would get value from the podcast, share it with them. That's it right? Just share it with them. Let them know about the podcast. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and let other people experience um, the value that we're giving here and the community that we also are a part of. Um, I really do believe that we are part of a community. And it's funny because someone had sent me an email and said, Scott, I am part of the TAS movement. And I thought that was really, really awesome because In 2017, guys, I do have a mission statement, and I am going to share that soon, but I want to help a lot of people, and uh, that's really going to be that mission, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys, all right? So definitely subscribe, share it with your friends, family, you know, whoever you think would get value from the podcast, and that would be totally awesome, all right? Now, before I jump in, one more quick thing. If you want to download the show notes to this episode, Uh, You can head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash 286. Again, that's theamazingseller.com forward slash 286. Show notes, transcripts, all over there. All right, so go check them out. All right, guys, so what do you say? Let's get rocking and rolling here. Let's go ahead and listen to today's first question, and I'll give you my answer. Hey, Scott Clark from Seattle, Washington. Loving your podcast and your over-caffeinated tangential rants. Super helpful, man. Hey, listen, I would love your take on a question I have. I run an existing brand that's currently offline, but we're moving on to Amazon's e-commerce platform. We have four existing products that I'm moving over. Now, my question to you is based on reviews. What would your review strategy be if you were in my position? How to best maximize and rank your products? I have a list of about 40 friends and family. Should I have them all buy all four of my products and leave reviews on them? I feel like that'd be kind of fishy and Amazon would catch on and delete the reviews. Should I have 10 of them review uh, four products each? Or should I have 40 of them review one product each? Really looking forward to it. Again, I appreciate all the info on your podcast. Have a great day, man. 
Hey, Clark, what's up, man? Thank you so much for the question. And yes, a little over caffeinated rants tend to happen here in TAS land, right? Every now and then it does happen. It does. Uh, I'm not sure if this will be the day that I have another one, but it may. I mean, you just don't know. Uh, (laughs) But anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for the question. All right. This is a great question. I love this question because you're already selling product outside of Amazon. And I get this question quite a bit where they say like, I already have a brick and mortar business. Can I sell my product on, on Amazon? And the, the answer is absolutely yes. A big fat yes. Because to me, you've already done the product research. You've already validated the product in your own brick and mortar. You're getting real feedback. You're getting real customers. So that's awesome. So anyone else that's listening right now, if you have a brick and mortar store and you're not listing your products on Amazon yet, you need to start that like immediately, right? Why not take advantage of that traffic? And it makes it super easy to start doing transactions online, especially using their platform. So definitely, yes, all right? Now, the question that you had was, okay, so I've got about 40 friends and family, and I wanna start getting some reviews up because I know that I've heard that, you know, if you get some reviews, well, then you're gonna probably convert better. And the answer is, that's Kind of true, uh, but the thing is, is how much competition do you have online with the products that you currently have? If you only have uh, you know, competition there that has five or 10 or 25 reviews, it's not really that big of a deal, right? Now, if you're going after a product that you are looking at a thousand reviews or more, then yeah, then you're gonna have to come up with a review strategy, okay, as far as doing that. And things have changed since that big update has come out, but you can still you know, go out there and and get some reviews, some honest reviews um, by just having a simple follow-up with your customers, all right? What I would advise doing, because you do already have traffic in your store, okay, because you already have a brick and mortar store, and this goes for anyone uh, that has a store, maybe give all of your customers a coupon to go to Amazon and buy the product there, all right? So this way here, you're getting them to go to Amazon one of your real customers, you're getting them to actually buy the product, so that's going to help your sales velocity there, and then they're going to also get sent through your email follow-up sequence or one that you manually send out, okay? Whether you use an automated email follow-up sequence or you manually do it, just you have to have something in place, whether you have someone on your staff that every day they go in and they email everyone that has purchased, right? Right? So that's the simple process. That's what I would do. If I already had that traffic, I would go ahead and take a flyer and give it out to them and say, hey, you know, receive 25% off your next order if you just go onto our Amazon store and do it there. Okay. So that's what I would do there to try to get that, to try to get that, uh, you know, that sales volume. Now, the other thing you can do if you have an email list from your customers, which I really hope you do, or anyone else listening, if you have a brick and mortar store, you still need to be collecting email addresses. All right, because you can follow up with them monthly, either get them back into your store or get them to buy on Amazon. Now, some might be saying, but why would I want to take my customers and push them over to Amazon? Well, the thing is, is sometimes they want to do that. If you have a a recurring uh, product that they would have to buy, you know, every single month or every quarter or whatever, why not put them into Amazon and let them do all the fulfillment and stuff? Now, you're going to lose a little bit of foot traffic, but that doesn't mean that they'll never come back in your store again, especially if you have maybe an only an in-store sale, right? So there's ways to get customers come in your store and also to go to Amazon. So I would I would say play around with that. Or maybe you only do it for your launch. Maybe you only let maybe 100 people do it that are, that are uh, you know, on your email list, right? Now, if you have an email list of customers, let's say you have 500 100 people on there, you might only send it out to 100 people, right? You don't have to let everyone know about it. It's like an exclusive deal for those people. So that's what I would recommend doing, okay? This way here, you're getting real customers that are coming through your door. You're going to incentivize them to go over and just buy your product to get a discount, mentioning nothing about reviews, and then just having them go through your your follow-up sequence. And I believe that they'll naturally want to leave a review anyway, okay? And that's what I would do. So Hopefully that's helped you. Hopefully it's helped anyone out there that has a brick and mortar store. If you know someone that has a brick and mortar store and they're not thinking about selling on Amazon, okay, here we go, right? Little light bulb moment. Talk to them about launching their products on Amazon and you might be able to take the cut, okay, or take a cut of that. Maybe they don't wanna, they don't wanna touch it, okay? You can say, have you ever thought about selling it on Amazon? No, I really haven't. I don't really know how to do that stuff. I'm really not technically or, you know, a technical type person where I can get on there and figure out the computer stuff. I really just like going to, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, flea markets, or I like selling my stuff in my store. I like doing like little home shows or whatever it is, right? They don't want the aggravation. 
Well, this is a great opportunity for someone that's like, I don't know what products to put up on Amazon. This is a great, great way for you to kind of get in there and say, well, I know all about that. Why don't I do that? And I'll just take 25% of all of the net sales. So if you make 100 bucks, you get 25, right? Pretty, that'd be a pretty sweet deal. So again, guys, this is how I think and I hope that you think. There's always going to be opportunities there for you to take advantage of from the knowledge that you have. So again, I know I went off on a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, I almost said decaffeinated, a little bit more of a, uh, an over-caffeinated rant there, totally not decaffeinated. Um, so hopefully this has helped you. Good luck. Keep me posted. And uh, yeah, I hope that you get out there and do that. All right, let's go ahead and listen to the next question and I'll give you my answer. Hi, Scott. Uh, this is Destiny. I am new to wanting to start selling on Amazon. I haven't done anything other than stumble across your podcast when I wanted to find out more information. I really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I have, I'm have i a college student, so I listen to your podcast when I can. I think I've done about six or seven of them. I started from the beginning and I listened to six or seven of them, and I listened to three and four over and over and over again to try to really understand how to pick a product. But here's where I'm stuck. I know I'm not supposed to go into a market that's overly saturated and, you know, some of the stuff on Amazon, like, say, the industrial section, it's not necessarily saturated because the reviews, there's only, like, maybe two to 300 reviews on each product, but I really can't see myself with a brand with that kind of stuff. It's kind of boring to me, but um, the, the, the section that I am interested in is makeup and cosmetics and stuff like that because I, I, that's what I... I like to do anyway, uh, but I have a feeling that that's going to be really, really saturated. And um, the second question that I have to that is uh, in the makeup s- section, like, are you looking, like when he says beauty, do you, like the beauty section, are you looking for, um, like, it would say lipstick be a subcategory of that? And like, what are the best selling ranks of lip, like the best selling you know, products under the lipstick category and look under that? Or do I just go to the, the beauty section as a whole and see what is selling top, top selling? Uh, that I had a hard time differentiating that. And um, I'm just kind of torn between the two just because I have a feeling that the beauty section is really saturated. So just some questions about how to go, you know, f- figure that out. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's Destiny. Bye. Hey, Destiny, thank you so much for the question, and uh, congratulations on getting started. I mean, that's the first step, so uh, congratulations on that. This is a good question, and I'm not going to, I guess, talk too long on it because I've talked about it a little bit before, but this is what I would be telling you again if we're sitting down having that cup of coffee. I'd be like, listen, going into a competitive market is going to take a lot of work and probably a lot of money, all right? So what I would do is I would try to find a sub niche or niche, depending on how you want to phrase that, um, and I would try to drill down into that. So if it was a vacuum cleaner that I was going after, I would be the filter, right? So I want to be an accessory to the thing, all right? And then this way here, I don't have to compete necessarily with the main product. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't be the main product down the road. It just means to enter the game, I want to find a way to add, you know, an accessory or something to that main, you know, competitive thing, all right? Hopefully, that makes sense. So, this way here, you're not trying to go in there and and really compete with thousands upon thousands of reviews. If, If you love that market, then that means that you can do a lot of creative things inside of that market. So let's say that you were going after, let's just say lipstick, right? If you're going after the lipstick, you might not really go after that particular thing. You might go after the case to hold the lipstick, right? You might go after, you know, different, I don't, and I don't know much about lipstick, okay? Uh, it might be a carrying case for your lipstick, right? It might be that type of stuff. Or maybe you cater yourself towards uh, people that are makeup artists, right, that don't necessarily just it's not just for themselves, it's for clients, and then they have to have a certain storage unit. So you see how I'm going with this? Like we're starting to brainstorm around that market, but not being 
you know, the one thing in that market or the big thing in that market. The other thing that you could do, and this is something that I'm playing around with right now, is if you want to draw attention, okay, and, and build up like an, an outside external uh, launch list of some kind, because that to me will be, if you're going to launch something that's even semi-competitive, you're going to want an external strategy. So this way here, you can have sales on day one. And also you're not relying on Amazon to rank you and do all of that stuff right out of the gate. And that would be like doing like this bundle of all of this makeup accessory stuff, right? But you have one component, but you're going to you're gonna go ahead and raffle off or have a giveaway or a contest where people would enter their email address. But it has to be valuable. It has to be, I say, at least $100 value or more. And then from there, they just enter their email address. And then on the back end of that is where you would have the email addresses that you know that they're into this thing. And then you can launch your product to those people. And that can be almost done instantly if you wanted to. After they enter their name and email address, you can instantly afterwards say, hey, thank you so much for registering. We'll go ahead and notify you the, you know, if you won in the next 20 days or whatever. And oh, by the way, we have this awesome carrying case that we're giving away for 50% off or 25% off, whatever it is. And then they can be driven right over to your listing almost immediately. Did you hear that? I snapped. Uh, that means quick. Uh, so... Uh, that's what I would do, and again, this is how I think, this is how I try to figure out a way to get yourself into that market without having to be, you know, really competing with the top dogs, if you will, you know what I mean? So this way here, you're able to still enter the market. The other thing that you could really do that would be cool is if you are selling something like, let's say, a lipstick or something, well, if this, like you said, you sound, you kind of sound like this is something that you're passionate about, well, maybe you're going to do uh, tutorials on YouTube, or maybe you're going to find other people that have done uh, YouTube videos, and then you're going to reach out to them and say, hey, I got this new makeup line. I'd love for you to try it and maybe do a, you know, maybe a review on your YouTube channel, not on Amazon, on YouTube, where you can then, they, they can then show their audience what they're using, and it happens to be your product, and then they can drive people over to your listing, or better yet, drive them over to a contest page or drive them over to a discount to get the product, um, something like that. And I know that you're you're fairly new, but again, you have to think about how can you enter the market if you want to get into that market without really competing just with Amazon players, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. All right. So that is my answer to your question. Good luck to you. Uh, and again, I would say just niche down, like really just try to find out how to niche the market down. Don't just go after the fishing pole, go after the fishing pole that's, that's built for the bass fishermen, something like that. All right. So, all right, let's go ahead and listen to the next question and I'll give you my answer. Hi, Scott. Uh, Will here all the way from South Africa. I uh, recently discovered your podcast. Really good stuff. Really enjoy it. Um, so getting down to the brass tacks of the question. Um, why my wife and I actually, uh, of, I started the whole Amazon business uh, a little bit more than a year ago. Um, started off slowly, getting more traction now. Um, and now she's actually looking, we're actually looking out for her to um, actually, uh, what do you call it, resign from her work. And... Actually, me, me and her will now go into business together with Amazon. So just uh, like to hear a bit about your input on it as you and your wife, I know, also start basically working together on this Amazon business and uh, just would like to hear some um, uh, your input into this. Cool. Thanks. Hey, Will, thank you so much for the question. I saved this one to the end. Uh, this is a great question, and this goes for anyone that's going into business with either their significant other or if it's just a partner or whatever, right? You have to understand that when you go into a partnership, you need to have different roles, okay? Different strengths. You're both not going to probably have the same strengths. At least that's not what I have with, you know, my wife, who is my business partner in pretty much everything that we've ever done. Um, she has her strengths. I have my strengths. And we've always kind of divvied it up, right? Like you, you take care of that. I'll take care of this. You're not going to come over here and, and start playing in my area, and I'm not going to go over there and start playing in your area. Um, it just makes it really, really easy. Um, I've also, 
uh, really uh, just myself personally, like I've kind of built my own little workstation, my own little area. So that's kind of where I do my thing and she has her own thing. And sometimes, most of the time, we're really not doing it at the same time. Uh, a lot of times, like right now, like just take, for example, this right here, like I'm recording this, she's not in the room, I'm by myself, and I'm with you guys, right? So that's kind of like, it, it's a loud time for this, right? Um, following up with with customers, like Amazon customers, you know, like that's kind of like her thing. So in the morning, she kind of goes through and sees if there's anything that we have to um, acknowledge. Is there anything that we have to uh, address? And then she may come to me with a problem that she might be not, you know, know the answer to, and then I'll have to, you know, kind of chime in there. But really, you have to figure out the roles, and I can't stress that enough. Even if you're just doing it with a partner, you have to know, like, are you going to be the one that does product research and then do you hand it off once you find the product after you find the sourcer or is it you're going to take the, you know, from product uh, creation as far as like, you know, you're, you're finding the product, then you're sourcing the product. And then the minute that you have some numbers back, then you hand it off, you know, because you have to have that in place. If you're both kind of dabbling in it, it makes it hard. Now, maybe both of you are going to say, you know what, we're going to both do product research, and then at the end of the week, we're going to come to the to the table, and we're going to say, this is what we got this week, and then you're going to kind of look at the ones that make the most sense. Maybe that's your strategy. Um, it just really depends. Going back to the photography days, again, my wife was really the creative. Like She was the one that knew how to take the pictures as far as not just even technically, because technically, she would admit it. She wasn't the technical side of things. She was more of the creative. So she learned the camera, right, of what she needed to know. But then it was more about the eye for the shot, right? Uh, to me, I, I don't have that, guys. I don't have that. But what I do have is I have the skill set now to take that image after she's done. And then I can do some editing in Photoshop and make that picture really pop. Or, you know, maybe it's cropped a certain way. Like, that's what I would do on my end. And then also the marketing. Like, that was my deal. That was my role, right? And then she was the people's person, you know, the people's people, people's person, person's people. I don't know, whatever it is. She was uh, the one that kind of dealt with the, you know, the customer, uh, you know, in, in the beginning, like she would do the consultation. Um, she would, uh, you know, listen to their story. She would, you know, have, you know, the, the emotional side with them. And then from there, you know, I would come in and do the photography with her, but I would be the one that would be getting the ch the, the child or the couple to relax or to smile or, um, so, you know, if you can kind of see, we kind of have both of our own roles in anything that we've ever done. Um, and it works really good. And a lot of people will say, I don't know how you do it. How do you guys work together without killing each other? And the answer is we, we break it up. We also get along. Okay. Uh, we actually been married for 22 years. So we kind of know, you know, each other's strengths and weaknesses and we're cool with that. And you know, it's a lot of give and take too. You know, there's some things that you might not agree with, with the one thing and the other thing, you know, they might not agree with you and, and there's a give and take, you know, you have to figure out like what's most important and then you focus on that. Um, and if you both have a similar vision, it will work. Um, but I will say, you know, everyone is different. Sometimes you can't work with your significant other, you know, may, maybe you can't. And if you can't, maybe learn that out, maybe do a test product and see how that works. Um, cause it will be different right now. You're maybe doing part-time when you're full-time. It's a lot of time during the day that you got to figure out like how to make that all work. All right. So, that was a little bit of a caffeinated rant, I think, as uh, someone had just <laughs> said earlier in the show. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that is my my thoughts and my feelings on that. I think it could be a really beautiful thing because you do get to spend time with each other. I mean, heck, we can uh, we can say at eleven o'clock we want to just go take a quick walk together, and we can and talk no nothing about this, and maybe we'll just talk about the kids or, or whatever, right? So. There's a lot of benefits for us. Um, it's allowed us to be together for for uh, you know most of our most of our marriage, right? I mean, a lot of times people are at work for eight nine hours a day, and they don't see their significant other, or maybe they're even flopped on uh, you know flip flopped on different you know times where you know the wife works during the day and the husband works at night, and then boom, you got like no time. Um, so to me, it's a beautiful thing if you can make it work. Um, if you can't. That's going to be uh, another, uh, I guess, uh, a, th a good thing if you can figure that out soon enough so this way here you don't make the mistake and then be miserable in that either. You don't want that at all. Um, and again, this goes for just a partnership. My father was in a partnership uh, for over 20 years, and it was like a bad marriage. It was literally 
terrible. Like going into these meetings that I was involved in was a lot of times it was a shouting match. It was nothing was going to get clear. You know, the partner was not going to agree with, with, uh, you know, the other partner and it was just going to be a constant back and forth, back and forth. And it, to me, it's, it's just bad. It's just bad for business, bad morale. It's bad for everyone. So definitely make sure that it's the right fit and just maybe do a test project. And I think you, you might already know just from the different characteristics of people and the different, you know, the different moods of different people, different times of day. It's just going to, uh, I I think it's going to kind of show itself, but you won't know until you actually get in there and do it. So hopefully this has been helpful. Good luck with that. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's going to pretty much wrap up today's session of ask Scott. I did want to remind you a couple different things. The show notes are located at the amazing seller.com forward slash two eighty six. Again, that's the amazing seller.com forward slash 286 show notes transcripts can be found there if you want to register for an upcoming TAS live event the TAS breakthrough live when we do another one which we don't have one scheduled right now but if you want to be notified head over to the amazing seller.com forward slash live and you'll get all the details over there and I just want to say guys thank you Thank you so much for being a listener, for giving me the feedback and, uh, you know, whether this has helped you or whether this has just kind of gotten you through maybe a tough day. A lot of people have said, Scott, sometimes I just listen because you're fired up and I want to get in that, in that state. I want to get in that mood. And you know what? That's cool to me too. You know, if, even if you don't come back here and you learn something, which I hope you do, but if you didn't, and I just get you kind of really kind of fired up for the day then to me, that's a success because you know what? If I can just get one person to move forward and and bust through any type of roadblocks or stumbling blocks, to me, that's a win. And uh, yeah, if I can do that for you, that'd be awesome. All right, guys, that's it. That's gonna wrap it up. Remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I'm rooting for you. But you have to, you have to. Come on, say it with me. Say it loud. Say it so proud today. Take action. Have an awesome, amazing day, and I'll see you right back here on the next episode.